Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's Faves number 50. In case you're watching these out of order, or it's the year 5,376, this was number 50. And 50, I, I was thinking, what could I do for number 50? And I decided I know what I want to do. I'm going to start doing more opera sets. Why? Because Dave's Faves is a very good place, I think, to do operas, because I can cover a lot of them individually, and I don't have to have a stack of 500 of them sitting here. Mind you, I could, but it takes such a long time, because you have to talk about conductors and cast members and compare so many different factors, and, it, it, and there's no point. The reason there's no point is because it makes absolutely no difference what you say. Opera people are nuts. They are the ultimate classical music whack jobs. Now, some people will, of course, comment and say, oh, you shouldn't make fun of people. It's just their taste. Bah, 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 bah. No, they're nuts. They're absolutely nuts. There are maybe four or five opera people in the world who I respect, whose opinion I respect, because it's based on a profound knowledge and a comparative objective disinterest. They are just interested in musical excellence. They're not passionate partisans of individual singers. I mean, I don't know how many of you remember this, but there used to be, in one of those chat rooms way back, a Cheryl Studer kooky. Remember the Studer troll? And everything Cheryl Studer did was the ultimate. And it, I mean, it was so crazy. And it, it disfigured so many conversations. And you, I, you know, I'm going to wind up, I know, deleting things all over the place. The only way I could do the best opera thing, really, I think, is if I did not permit comments to prevent just the, the usual opera insanity that I, I just have no tolerance for. I mean, the reason opera people exist is because they make the piano wackos and the authenticity noodles and the Bruckner cookies. All of those people feel normal, <laughs> and they are by comparison. So I want to do some more operas. I really do because they're fun to talk about, but I am not going to start doing these stacks of comparative things that are going to take hours to do and that are going to create a brouhaha of hysteria amongst the opera file community. Sorry, opera people. I love you, but I'm not indulging that psychotic lunacy that is opera fandom. So what are we talking about? What are we talking about? Which opera are we doing? Well, we're doing Puccini's Tosca. And the Tosca I am picking, because it's the first Puccini opera I heard, is this one. Montserrat Caballé, José Carreras, and Ingvar Vixel on Phillips with the Royal Opera House Orchestra, Covent Garden, under Colin Davis. I love this performance. And I'm going to tell you exactly why I love this performance. But I, I just hope, you, you know, want you to understand, I didn't get this because of the singers. I didn't know anything about singers when I got this. I was, I was, I was, I wasn't even able to drive. I was pedaling around on a bicycle, and I got this at one of those, one of those five and dime discount stores. I think it was Grant's. I think it's the one it was um, that had a record section, and I got this on LP. And I got it because the record section was nothing but pop music. And I heard some other Puccini stuff. I actually had the, the Birgit Nielsen Burling Turandot, you know, so I wanted more Puccini and I didn't know what I could get. And there, sitting amongst all of the KTEL, you know, 100 greatest hits, was this. And it cost like $2. And it was, it, it, the reason I got it was because it had that wonderful Philips packaging. Remember those, those big, thick boxes with styrofoam on both sides? And the fabulous pressings, I mean, they were wonderful. What it was doing in grants, I have no idea. It could be that it was like remaindered because it had on the back of the cover this sort of like some oil stain or some creepy foreign substance that like stained the, the box somehow. But I didn't care. I mean, what difference did it make to me? So I got it. And I since heard a lot of other ones, of course, and a lot of other ones are marvelous. I mean, there's Leontine Price's two versions and there's, there's you know, Callas, 
ah, opera people hide. You know, Heather's Callus, which is absolutely stunning. The you know, mono, the mono callus one. I mean, one of the definitive and most fabulous recordings of the world, but it's not the one I pick because I like better sound. I like better sound. And the singing here is fabulous. I mean, Caballé was a great singer. This is one of her roles. I know people tend to laugh at her because she was, she was somewhat hefty. And, you know, in opera lore, she refused to take the jump off the parapet at the very end. She would like run off stage or have some, you know, some extra supernumerary flunky get pushed off the parapet because she wasn't going to hurt herself. And I don't blame her. I don't blame her a bit. She wasn't stupid. The Sopranos did get hurt jumping off the parapet. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't a given that that was going to go according to plan, especially when you were sort of large and hefty. So good for her. Anyway, she's a fabulous Tosca. I mean, the voice is gorgeous. It's dramatic. It's intense. It's just fantastic. And Jose Carreras, this was like his first major opera recording. He was young and virile and every every bit the perfect Cavardossi. I mean, he really had the voice for it and the and and the fire and, and oh, it's just great. And Vixel was nice and evil. Is Scarpia? I mean, he's not. He was no Tito Gobi, let's put it that way, but but he was really, really fine. It was a very good role for him. And the thing about Tosca that's really cool is that really the whole opera is just three characters. It's just those three characters. Everybody else has a little line here or a bit of something there. But essentially, that's the whole opera. It's these three characters, there's a couple chorus bits, and that's the whole deal. So if you've got three really great principles, you're in fabulous shape. Now, this is this is the Philips 50 series version of it. Um, now, of course, it's on DECA to the extent it's available at all. But I still think that in the great world of puccini Dum, this is one of the best recordings. And Colin Davis, I have to give him credit. First of all, the Covent Garden Orchestra sounds great. Second of all, the sonics are absolutely fabulous, beautiful, top to bottom, a velvety, rich sonority for the orchestra because Puccini's orchestration is just so glorious. And thirdly, people who, who bitch about Colin Davis and, you know, English conductors in general, you know, in Italian music, as we go, oh, it's not red-blooded Italian, it's English, it's cold, it's just nonsense. Colin Davis was as passionate a conductor as has ever existed. Absolutely. He had all the fire and meat and potatoes that this piece needs. Or should I say, you know, pasta and, 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 and cotoletto, I mean, it's, 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 it's veal tonato here. It's just terrific. Absolutely terrific. So my choice for Tosca is this one. Caballé, Carreras, Vixel, Colin Davis on Decca. And I just, I just, you know, if you want to comment, okay. But I don't want to hear crazy. I do not want crazy. Let's see how far we get. Well, you won't see the crazy because I'll make sure <laughs> it never sees the light of day, at least not for very long. But, well, we'll see where we go and we'll see how many operas we can stuff in here because I love opera and I have so many that I like and I don't have an opportunity to talk about them otherwise. So this is, this is the forum. I have a feeling. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.